Welcome to ESPN's College Football Primetime, served by Applebee's. Tonight, Georgia Tech, the rambling wreck, hosting Virginia Tech. The Hokies have won 11 straight road games, but they come into a frenzied atmosphere tonight. A battle of two teams ranked in the BCS. The Hokies ranked number 10. In the six years that the ACC has had a championship game, either Virginia Tech or Georgia Tech has played in it. The Yellow Jackets have to win tonight if they want to stay alive and keep their hopes alive of playing in that title game. The Hokies can take a giant step toward controlling the ACC Coastal. Glad to have you with us Thursday night in the ACC. Reese Davis, Craig James, and Jesse Palmer. Jen Brown's going to join us in just a little bit. Hokies are back to putting up their customary fine defensive numbers, but in a three-game stretch prior to their last game against Duke, Craig, Virginia Tech put up 470 yards of offense or more three straight times. It had never happened in the Frank Beamer era. What's making this offense go? I think Logan Thomas is the key to the offense and the key to this football team. He's a big player. He's talented. He's 8-1 in the starter. A few weeks ago against Miami, I saw him go 23 out of 25. One of the drop, one of the incompletions was a drop pass. This offense is really explosive when he gets his arm and his legs going with it. And I also believe that David Wilson is a key part of this football team. Wilson, number three in the FBS in rushing, 132 yards a game, eight 100-yard games. He can do it all. He jumps over people, runs around them. He can extend plays. I think they've got to play keep away. Play keep away from Georgia Tech's offense in this ball game tonight because Georgia Tech, if their offense gets it, they can play keep away from you. Yeah, David Wilson has some gaudy running numbers as an individual. Georgia Tech has them as a team, Jesse. That spread option ranks second in the country in rushing. How do you handle it? It's a tremendous challenge for Virginia Tech's defense. They'll have to play sound assignment football tonight. I think one of the biggest challenges stopping this vaunted rushing attack of Georgia Tech, they're so balanced. It used to be you had to worry about stopping Jonathan Dwyer or Anthony Allen at running back. This year, Georgia Tech has three different players that are averaging over 60 rushing yards per game. Now, I think one key player that Virginia Tech has to worry about is junior quarterback Tevin Washington. He's leading the team in rushing yards. He's also already thrown for more touchdown passes than the team had all last season. Tevin Washington will have to make great decisions in the pre-snap game tonight as well as the post-snap if they're to have any success against a Virginia Tech defense, one of the best units in the nation. That is one of the grand traditions in college football, the 1930 Model A Sport Coupe, the rambling wreck, leading the Jackets out. Kickoff coming up. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by the new Capital One Cash Card for people who want 50% more cash at Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. ACC on ESPN Thursday night in Atlanta. Bobby Dodd Stadium, Georgia Tech getting set to take on number 10, Virginia Tech. Jen Brown working the field for it. She's standing by with Hokies head coach Frank Beamer. Coach, Georgia Tech's triple option offense lead is second in the nation in rushing. How do you slow them down? Well, you got to be really good. You got to be very disciplined. Can't take false steps. You take a false step, they get you. They they hit you at you so fast. So uh, it's a challenge for us. Now David Wilson, he leads the ACC. He's second in the country in rushing. Obviously, a lot of defensive have focused their game plan for him. Yet he's still so effective. What makes him so effective? Well, he's fast and he's strong, and he runs with such great effort on every single carry. Uh, a lot of a lot of motion in his running. So uh, we think he's good. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Reese? Jen, he is indeed good, and Frank Beamer with the departure of Joe Paterno is now the winningest active coach in college football. He's in his 25th year at his alma mater, 31st year overall, 248 wins. That is one win short of the legendary Lou Holtz on the all-time wins list. On the flip side, it is Paul Johnson in his fourth season at Georgia Tech. Two times already he has been the ACC Coach of the Year. Won the ACC championship once, a 33 and 16 record as the head coach of the Yellow Jackets. Won a national championship, a pair of them in fact, as a head coach at Georgia Southern in the football championship subdivision. Georgia Tech wins the toss. They have deferred. Virginia Tech will receive on a beautiful night for football here in Atlanta. 46 degrees. We do have a slight breeze, but 
It's November, the time when championships are pursued, and this is the type of weather you want as Buzz seems to have a little bit of extra energy in the cold weather tonight. Encourage the fans to wear white for the wideout conditions as David Scully gets set to pick it away for the Yellow Jackets. One of the men deep is David Wilson, who last year against Georgia Tech took a kickoff back for a touchdown that proved to be the winning score. And here is Wilson as we're underway from Atlanta. And Wilson with the tremendous speed gets it up to the 30-yard line before he stopped by Lewis Young. Starting quarterback for the Hokies, the 6-6 sophomore from Lynchburg, Virginia, Logan Thomas. Logan Thomas has really grown since the loss earlier this season against Clemson. There were so many expectations on him heading into the year, replacing Tyrod Taylor, last year's ACC Player of the Year. Logan Thomas was able to let go. He started playing for himself, responded with a five-touchdown performance against Miami. The team has won four in a row since then, lots of that in part because of Logan Thomas. Also a dangerous runner. It'll be play action. Thomas escapes a rush and then it swallows him up. Logan might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Logan Walls there to knock him down. It'll be second and ten. How about the impact player? Running back David Wilson, one of the best in the country, does not get enough credit. He is the fastest player on the field tonight. He is a true home run threat, can score every time he touches the football. And Danny Cole on the outside, 147 career receptions, along with Jarrett Boykin, really gives Logan Thomas dependable receivers on the outside. And Julian Burnett, the linebacker for Tech, has 33 more tackles than anybody else on his team. You will see number 40 around the football all night. Wilson has his first carry. And Wilson is hit in the backfield, and he'll lose yardage. First man to hit him is Steven Sylvester, the senior from McDonough, Georgia. It'll be third and long. Just did the Georgia Tech Clemson game. And the thing that impressed me the most was the way Georgia Tech's defense started the game hitting people a lot of confidence the way they are attacking where the ball is Craig they are scared to death of David Wilson's speed tonight it is critical that they play well with run fits they do not allow any creases for David Wilson to run through did a tremendous job on that play nowhere to go Thomas again pressured a throwback he's got a man wide open and is complete Jarrett Boykin with the big grab and Virginia Tech converts on third and long over Rod Sweeney. Third down is generally where Georgia Tech puts a lot of their speed up front on the defensive line to get pressure on the opposing quarterback. That time, Logan Thomas able to just buy himself time. He throws it up to Jared Boykin, the school's all-time leading wide receiver, to make a huge catch and convert here for a first down. Picked up 33 on third and 13, back to the ground, and Wilson... This time, Wilson gets positive yardage, might have picked up three at the most before Quayshawn Neely stopped him. That last play by Logan Thomas is an indication of just how much confidence he has. He's a big-bodied player in the, in the back of that pocket, and when you do flybys as a defender, you've got to really attack to bring him down. By extending place, he's got that big arm. you just seen that. The defense at Georgia Tech now will have to get back five yards more to respect the strength of that arm. Wilson hit hard, and David pushed it ahead to the 35. He's going to be about five yards short. It'll be third down. Again, this is a down. Georgia Tech defensive coordinator Al Groh likes to get his speed on the field in pass rushing situations. Backup linebackers Brandon Watts, Jeremiah Atalju, Emmanuel D.A.K., Euclid Cummings. They can bring a lot of different looks in the pass rush. This offensive line has to be dialed in on this down. Which Jesse is a positive against David Wilson's running. They've got to stop him before he gets started. If he gets a head start, they're in trouble defensively. Thomas fires it high and almost intercepted. It'll be fourth down. This Georgia Tech defense, Al Groh, has developed. He told us earlier in the season they're more athletic. He can do different things with his substitution packages. In year two, 
of being coached by him. So this is a more versatile defense. They have a lot more looks. They're going to need them tonight against a very multiple Virginia Tech offense. Virginia Tech has struggled in field goal kicking, so Beamer is electing to punt it away. And Michael Brandover has kicked it into the end zone, so that's going to be a grand total of a pickup of 15 yards. And if you punt it into the end zone, might as well go for it. You've got to keep it in the field of play. Georgia Tech will have it on the 20 when you come back. Back in Atlanta, Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech, the Hokies drove to the Yellow Jackets 35, but had to punt it away. And after punting into the end zone, Georgia Tech about to take over on his 20. And here is the matchup we've been looking forward to. The Hokies, one of the best scoring defenses in the country, while Georgia Tech has been prolific on offense. Not only in the top 20 in scoring, they are among the national leaders in explosive plays. They have eight one-play touchdown drives this season. Option and the give to David Sims, a short game on first down. The quarterback is Tevin Washington. Tevin Washington this year has really developed as a passing quarterback. They're not throwing it more, they're completing more, and when they do it, they're big plays. He also has had success on the ground with his legs, running with three of the last four games, 100 yards. So he is the general of this offense, and it all starts with that fullback behind him making the right decision. Tevin keeps it. Virginia Tech plays it very well. Washington might have gotten to the 26. Jack Tyler, a sophomore that's in the starting lineup for Virginia Tech because of his ability to slide off blocks, makes a tackle. It'll be third and four. You know, the one thing that you look at this Virginia Tech defense, it has been decimated this year by injuries. Jaron Gavea Winslow, Bruce Taylor, both out with midfoot fractures. Alonzo Tweedy, who replaced Gavea Winslow is missing this game with an ankle injury. Hosley's missed time. James Gale. They've had to patchwork it a little bit as the Yellow Jackets on third down, leaving on the inside with what they call the B-back, and David Sims gets across the 30 for the first first down of the night for Georgia Tech. The pre-snap reads by Tevin Washington determine which direction play calls go in this spread option offense. The defense will predicate the direction it goes. Tevin Washington really needs to be dialed in tonight with his decision making. Yeah, and these two defensive tackles on the inside right here, they're key. Can they push the pocket, make him bow? A quick toss to Roddy Jones. And the A-backs, those are the guys who line up on the wing. This year, all of those guys have gaudy per yard carries. And a little bit different from some years from Georgia Tech where the B-back, the guy who lines up right behind the quarterback, has been the workhorse. It seems that they've gotten the A-backs much more involved. Well, that B-back used to be Jonathan Dwyer, Anthony Allen, big-time running backs. David Sims is a good player, but he's maybe not the same caliber as those guys, and this offense has found more success running outside. They'll try it again, Orwin Smith. Orwin Smith is knocked down by Kyle Fuller. Fuller is the only guy who was among the top nine tacklers against this option offense last year when Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech played to be on the field tonight or to be in the starting lineup tonight. Early observation is Virginia Tech's flying around. They're flying to the football. They're not sitting back on their toes. This is a more athletic, lighter defense that Bud Foster has decided to go with tonight. And you can see it in the pursuit to the football already. Georgia Tech leads the nation in converting third downs. They've already converted one tonight. Washington the pitch. Now they've converted two. Into the open field is Embry Peoples. Peoples with a huge gain. He'll be marked down at the 25-yard line, a pickup of 39. Jesse, you just mentioned that it all starts with the inside read to that V-back. Watch Virginia Tech shift to the inside prior to the snap. Now, this is Tevin Washington. He has to make the right decision. He sees the pursuit inside, pulls the football, and kicks it. It is critical in this offense that they block on the perimeter of the field. And on that play, Roddy Jones did a great job in the alley on the outside, springing Embry Peoples for the big game. On first down, Sims. And there's a flag thrown into the middle of the pile. As Sims picked up a couple. Line line. Personal foul, shot block, number 77, offense, 15-yard holding, first down. And Paul Johnson frustrated. Now, Georgia Tech, though they do it on the perimeter more than in the interior, they do 
cut block, which is different from a chop block. A, a chop block, which the penalty was for, is when one guy's engaged high and another guy goes low. Of course, Paul Johnson, you know, he 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 says most of the time they call the wrong ones. <laughs> Some of them we earn. <laughs> there is Omorge Uzi, who was called for the chop. He's the most experienced lineman. So on first and 24, Orwin Smith. Inside the 35, it'll be marked down at the 33. Virginia Tech defensive coordinator Bud Foster had to make a lot of personnel changes for this game. I think the biggest one we should be watching is J.R. Collins, a normally a defensive end who's moved into defensive tackle for this game. He wants to get more experience on the field inside. Right now at defensive tackle, they have two true freshmen and Luther Matty, Corey Marshall slated to start. They move Collins inside because to stop this offense, you got to go inside out, stop the dive first. Counter pitch, Washington keeps it. He's inside the 25 and marked down about the 22. He'll have about seven yards to go, but with this offense now, that's a more manageable distance. So that athleticism that you just pointed out there with Collins, you see what Tevin Washington does to that. Those guys are athletic and they're chasing the football, but Washington has become so composed in running this offense that he fakes the pitch and they went for it. I think it'll be interesting to see, Craig, whether or not Georgia Tech can dominate physically inside because Collins only 240 pounds going up against a big offensive lineman inside. First pass of the night, Stephen Hill. Hill is hit immediately by J. Ron Hosley, and Hill pulls ahead for about two. It'll bring up fourth down and five. Now, Johnson is typically not shy about going for it. And it appears the offense at the moment is staying on the field. You like the call? Yeah, could because they're they're used to this. And he believes that at fourth and five, that's a convertible, highly convertible play for him. And probably factoring in Justin Moore, the field goal kicker. He's only five out of nine. Johnson's gonna try to convert on fourth and five. And now it'll be fourth and ten. Will Jackson. Firing out way too soon. Though actually, Georgia yeah. Tech is complaining wow. that Virginia Tech, perhaps mm -hmm. in the neutral zone, made a move or perhaps even barked out a count, similar to the snap count. Let's see what Brad Allen, our referee, says. Outside. Watch 98, and he stepped in there, and when he did, Jackson actually a pretty heady play. If the defender jumps and you're close enough. You expect anything off. less from a guy from Georgia Tech? Of course not. Knowing the rules? Great engineering school, and fourth and five is converted, and it's first and 10, Georgia Tech at the Virginia Tech 15. Sam, David Sam's down to the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal as he gets inside the five, and Georgia Tech has it rolling. Georgia Tech right now getting tremendous push inside. Right guard, Morge Uzi, doing a nice job on a double team on the defensive tackle, opening up the lane for that dive. How about Sims? The guy was a quarterback in the spring. He's adapted to the B-back position. He's got the great eyes and the feet. He knows when he's supposed to be getting the ball. 12th play of the drive, Tevin Washington. Not much. There's a lot of pressure on this offense to have to score touchdowns instead of field goals when they get inside the red zone. This offense is not conducive to playing catch up later in game. So when they get their opportunity to get points, they have to capitalize. Three points, not enough to beat teams like Virginia Tech. I remember their last game doing it and, and Paul Johnson wanted to limit Clemson's offense to 10 possessions. They held them to 12. Clemson didn't have their normal 18 possession game. Second and goal. Washington looking for the end zone. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. That is Washington's 11th touchdown run of the year. Georgia Tech has 88 yards rushing. Initial drive of the night. 
Seven more yards rushing than the actual drive due to the penalty yardage that backed him up. 13 plays, 80 yards for the six and a half minutes off the clock. And the Yellow Jackets have the lead. Moore has been perfect on points after touchdowns this year. He's now 45 out of 45. And when he has smiles around for Georgia Tech is Kevin Washington and that option offense. They cut through the Hokies and they're up by seven. ESPN's College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. Veterans and active duty military eat free on Veterans Day. And in part by Chrysler, imported from Detroit. Georgia Aquarium here in Atlanta, built as the world's largest aquarium with more than 100,000 animals, 500 different species. Georgia Tech, much of the line of this crowd, up by an early touchdown. Saturday Night Football on ABC features a top 10 showdown in the Pac-12. Andrew Luck and Stanford taking on LaMichael James and Oregon. Cardinal dealing with a rash of injuries. They have to win to keep their national championship hopes alive. And of course, both of these teams in the Pac-12 North hoping to play in the inaugural Pac-12 championship game. Georgia Tech hoping to go to the ACC championship game for the third time. David Wilson bobbles it. Sometimes this is dangerous. This is not one of those times. Wilson stopped at the 10. Guys, just look back at the touchdown. Watch Yellow Jackets head coach Paul Johnson. You know what? Paul Johnson is one of those guys that right before the play, he's like, oh, no, it's horrible. This is a disaster coming. He tried to do that against Clemson. He tried to call timeout, and it didn't get him, and they scored. He's like, absolutely what I was looking for. He heard Tevin Washington audible on that play, and as soon as he heard it, he thought the play was going to be disastrous. You know, Steve Spurrier used to do that with me, too. I throw deep post routes down the middle of the field. I can hear him on the sideline yell, no! <laughs> but if you caught it, it was okay. <laughs> Logan Thomas now trying to change things up for the Hokies. David Wilson and David has not found much running room. It'll be second and nine. I, I think when you sit in a meeting and you talk football with Al Grove, you understand that his defense, he teaches them, if they were a name in basketball, they'd be pressing fast break. They're, they're small. So I'm very curious to see tonight if they can match the physicality of Virginia Tech on offense. Little guys with lots of speed, very versatile, lots of different looks. How do they match up tonight? Hey, Wilson is at the bottom of the screen and now coming in motion. Jet sweep. David Wilson. Woo! Takes a big hit from Julian Burnett, but Wilson is close to the first down marker. It'll be third down and one. David Wilson is fast. That's an understatement. He got clocked at a 4.29 40-yard dash. He had a 90-yard kick return for a touchdown in this game last year. You see, Craig, he puts his foot in the ground, gets north-south. It's like a rocket. He's not a track star. He's a football star. And this defense has got to maintain the proper fits and stay outside and balanced for he'll run right by them. Logan Thomas uses that 6-6 frame and moves the chains for the first down, although David Wilson did win the triple jump at the Penn Relay. Yes, he did. He, he also won the backflip competition among just about anybody I've ever seen in college football. He reeled off 10 straight at one point. Because he taught himself when he was four years old watching gymnastics on television how to do a standing backflip. And he was four years old. I tried it too when I was four. <laughs> I never tried it again. Logan Thomas, Logan's going to pull it down, and then he's going to go down. It'll be second and long. Jason Peters was there. Now, here's David Wilson performing these backflips. At one point, he actually did more than this. Let's count them off. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He has done ten in a row, but David appears to be a little bit dizzy. He's a remarkable athlete. They talk about his energy on the practice field. He will occasionally sneak over and climb up on Frank Beamer's coaching tower and tell everybody to take a jog. Average for touch, more than eight yards. Tremendous kick return. This time, Logan Thomas fakes it to Wilson. 
It's up to about the 28-yard line. He'll be about four yards Logan short Thomas of the first down. Here. I think, Jesse, in order for Virginia Tech to get it going, they've got to get Logan Thomas into the game physically. Boy, when he runs the football, he's got that Cam Newton-type line. He gets compared a lot to Cam Newton, fairly or unfairly. One thing with that big frame, though, Craig, he can wear a defense down. If he gets into the second level, there are not very many linebackers or defensive backs that want to try him. Although Jeremiah Tauchu said all of us will try him. <laughs> and he said it with a smile. Yes, he did. Third and four. Somebody gets a chance to try Logan now. Rod Sweeting tried and he wound up on his back. Julian Burnett was there too. Another first down for the Hokies. Sean Spence, Luke Keekley, a lot of good defenders in the ACC have done this, but Logan Thomas doing a nice job. Nothing open downfield, the clock going off in his head, getting north, getting the first down. There's that 250 pound frame. A lot of white jerseys falling backwards. You know, and, and Al Groh tried to, tried to create just a little bit of an, an umbrella there to protect against that, but he's such a dynamite runner and so powerful. He's gonna pick up two or three more yards after the initial contact. Josh Ogles became running into Thomas. There was some confusion. Virginia Tech uses the timeout. Less than a minute and a half to go in the first. ESPN College Football is streaming live on your computer, tablet, or smartphone via WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Late in the first quarter here at Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia Tech has scored first, a 7-0 lead on Virginia Tech. Hokies with 123 remaining in the first quarter. Logan Thomas, the quarterback, will be first and 10. You know, we're talking about Logan Thomas's ability to run with power. He didn't really want to be a quarterback when he went to Virginia Tech. Had in mind playing tight end, always viewed himself as a receiver. Now there's plenty of confusion. He's going to have to view himself as a runner. And Logan, I believe it was Logan who turned the wrong way, and then he ended up here, here the running back did, and he ended up picking up 10 or 11 yards and getting another first down. This is how you break your tendencies. You mess up on your own. <laughs> it's the phantom fullback, which really messes up defensive players' keys. You know, I don't, it Josh wasn't. Oglesby ended up being a lead blocker, so it worked anyway. It looked like it was a design play. But Logan Thomas, 250 pounds, runs a 4640, wearing a size 18 cleat. Are you kidding me? It looked as if Oglesby was the one that went the wrong way. The blocking was to the right. Logan turned to the right, and Oglesby went left. But at least he found somebody to hit. David Wilson. Wilson's best run of the night. He breaks a couple of tackles, and David Wilson is down close to the 40-yard line. David Wilson has tremendous quick twitch ability. You're going to see him tonight do some awkward body bending because his athleticism off the charts. It's the power with the spin, too. Did you see he spun going north? He got right into it. Very few runners can do that. When they spin with power, and, and a defender can't get enough cloth to hang on. Wilson now with 25 yards. He's averaging nearly 132 per game. Headed toward 15 seconds to play in the quarter. Thomas fires over the head of Jarrett Boykin. It'll be second and ten. This Georgia Tech secondary is playing extremely physical right now with a very big group of wide receivers from Virginia Tech. You know, Virginia Tech has three guys that are at least six foot two or 220 pounds. And this secondary, they pride themselves on jamming guys at the line of scrimmage, rerouting guys into their routes, and right now they're doing a great job of that. Al Groh last week against Clemson's very powerful, potent, multi-talented offense had his secondary up in their face, Jesse. He said, I want you to hit them, redirect them, stay with them as long as you can. They're very physical. Wilson, right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and 10. It's going to be the final play of the first quarter. And the Hokies have a third and long to deal with against the Jackets when the second quarter starts in Atlanta.
And now for tonight's Saturday menu brought to you by Applebee's. Oklahoma State now with a clear path to the national championship game, but have to go on the road to take on Texas Tech. The Cowboys have won nine straight away from home. And we're watching tonight. Virginia Tech has won 11 in a row away from home. Longest active road winning streak. Virginia Tech trailing Georgia Tech 7-0 and looking at a third and 10 as we start the second quarter. Logan Thomas firing and he has his man there. He did for a moment and Chris Drager couldn't hang on to it. Drager was going for his 10th catch of the season. The previous nine or all nine of them have gone for first downs and that one would have too if he could have held on. Five man rush by Algro. Watch the middle of the field. They push Logan Thomas out. And then downfield just couldn't finish the play. Third down is Georgia Tech defensive coordinator Al Groh's baby. He loves throwing screwball looks up front, bringing different people, show them covered zero, a big blitz look on that play before backing out and confusing Logan Thomas. Michael Gren over, hunted it into the end zone last time, gets a much better kick away this time. Virginia Tech will surround it. Georgia Tech will start on its own eight-yard line when you come back. Georgia Tech with a 7-0 lead on Virginia Tech. Yellow Jackets put the ball in play from their own seven-yard line after forcing the Hokies to punt. There is Paul Johnson, who tonight is trying to go 3-0 at home here in Atlanta against top 10 teams. In the 41 years prior to Paul Johnson's arrival, Georgia Tech was 2-29-1 against top 10 teams at home, and he could get his third victory. He hasn't lost one of those yet at home. Last victory was against a top 10 team in Clemson. Option. Well played as Virginia Tech knocks down Roddy Jones after pick up maybe one. Bud Foster making an adjustment here on the inside. Trying to come in there. Look at the number of bodies covered up on the inside. See all these linemen on the inside. Lots of pressure. Made the quarterback throw back. It's amazing to me watching this offense is how quickly the football can be three different places in an instant, putting so much stress on the defense. Preston Lyons is at V-back. That's behind Washington. Balls on the ground. Washington falls on it. It'll be third and long. Now this is an area here when you're talking about mistakes on second down creating third and long Virginia Tech on third down they're one, number one in the ACC 31 percent and this is and Craig this is not an offense built to convert third and long it's not a passing offense they don't go empty they don't bring four or five wide receivers on the field and spread everybody out this is not familiar territory for this Georgia Tech offense of course that guy off the far right Stephen Hill averages 30.4 per reception so maybe he can do something with it Washington firing into traffic and he had a man open. He hit him right in the hands and Orwin Smith dropped it. Georgia Tech will have to punt. Over the last four games, there have been a lot of inconsistencies in the passing game for Georgia Tech. And the biggest reason has been execution. Tevin Washington missing guys that are open, wide receivers dropping balls like that. They've only completed 38% of their passes in the last four contests heading into tonight. You must capitalize when given the opportunity. No touchdown passes in over a month. October 1st was the last time Sean Poole, a low, short punt. And Virginia Tech will have excellent field position inside Georgia Tech's 40-yard line. They'll spot it just outside the 36. Hokies have it when you come back. Football Primetime, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Experience truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer. And Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. That is the Fountain of Rings, the centerpiece of Centennial Olympic Park, one of the most recognized landmarks in Georgia. Of course, the 1996 Olympic Games held here in Atlanta. And they've been able to use the Olympic Village and other things to help revitalize the downtown area. The Olympic Stadium is now Turner Field where the Braves play. Some housing here at Georgia Tech. And Virginia Tech 
has it deep in Georgia Tech territory as Josh Oglesby gets the carry on first down and gets down to the 33 yard line. Well, as you look at these two teams, here's what both of them have at stake in terms of the ACC Coastal Race. If the Hokies can win, Georgia Tech and Miami are eliminated. Georgia Tech, on the other hand, would take over first place at least temporarily in the Coastal. However, because Georgia Tech lost to Virginia, they would still need the Cavaliers to lose again. But both of these teams are in the fight. Virginia also still in the race for the ACC Coastal. These two teams are the only teams to ever represent the Coastal. In the conference championship as Oglesby gets the call and he picks up the first down at the 23-yard line as we go to the studio and check in with Wendy Nance. Reese, thank you. Sports Center right now brought to you by Coors Light. According to MSNBC, Joe Paterno has hired a prominent Washington criminal defense lawyer to represent him in the Penn State sex abuse case. Important to note, Paterno has not been charged with any crimes. And this afternoon, a local paper reported that the Board of Trustees have asked that assistant coach Mike McQuery be kept off the sidelines in Saturday's home game against Nebraska. Okay, Wendy, thank you for the update on what has been a surreal story in State College, Pennsylvania. Oglesby gets it down to the 20 yard line. It'll be second down at about seven. So I think this is a part of the field that Virginia Tech really has to improve. This year, They've had the majority of their turnovers and their penalties take place in the fringe area on their opponent's side of the field. They gotta be really smart here, Craig. 80% to be exact. So inside the 30, they've not been good with the penalties. But you see the formation changes, the shifting right now. They're trying to confuse Georgia Tech and, and eliminate the aggressiveness that Algro's defense started the game with. Been pretty effective. Thomas wanted to throw it for the fifth time, and he's chased down by Jeremiah Tauchu. And Tauchu, who has four sacks on the season, doesn't get a sack, but a stop on the quarterback, it'll bring up third down. Tauchu showed tremendous athleticism on this play. He was able to cover an underneath route runner and then get off, chasing down Logan Thomas to make the tackle. Tremendous athleticism. Well, and, and again, that goes back to support what Al Groves told us this year, that he has a more athletic football team. You see it right there from a tout shoe. Jerry Boykin up top one-on-one. -on -one. Thomas firing for the end zone, and it stopped just short, but the grab is made by D.J. Coles. Sweeting hit him immediately, but it'll be first and goal for the Hokies. Coaching staff says D.J. Coles is the most improved player in this receding court. You see him at the top of the screen running a corner route. Nice inside stem, putting his foot in the ground, creating a separation. You also saw the composure there of Logan Thomas in the pocket and the read of Logan Thomas, knowing where to go with the football. It's a very smart quarterback. When he gets hot, again, he was 23 out of 25 against Miami a few weeks ago. Oglesby. Hit in the backfield and stop. Josh is going to lose a couple. First guy to get there was Julian Burnett. Again, the Yellow Jackets leading tackler. I, I think this is a, an area right now where you make Logan Thomas that tailback. You go three wide, you spread out, and you leave him back there with the fullback so he's like a runner. I agree. You get that plus one advantage in the running game. Maybe set him up in the shotgun. Right now, Virginia Tech going with their big people. Josh Oglesby, former fullback in the backfield. Oglesby picks up the yardage he lost. He stopped short of the goal line. It'll be third and goal now. You mentioned earlier this is a very small defense for Georgia Tech, except up front. It's a 3-4 personnel, but the D-line average is 287 pounds. You see Paul Johnson here telling his guys to watch underneath the center here, try to get tipped off when they're going to snap the football. Hogan Thomas using that 6-6 frame. The official's coming in. Hokies want a touchdown with the official across the way saying he stopped short. It'll be fourth and goal. But the thing I like about the formation and the call is by being in the I formation, you make those linebackers worry about handing it off to the tailback. Yellow Jackets have a defensive lineman down. I think it's T.J. Barnes. 
Six seven, three hundred forty-seven pound junior from Enterprise, Alabama. Number ninety, KJ Barnes. Georgia Tech getting a tremendous jump on that snap. They just beat them off the ball. Leverage too, right? Flat back, stay lower than the opponent. And how about this? With all the cameras and the great work that our camera guys do, what about the job by the officials? I mean, they're going to have a look at this, but I think the officials on the field were spot on. Georgia Tech stayed low, and it looked to me as if they kept Logan Thomas out of the end zone from that previous look. Yeah, there's no video evidence there, so that would make it, in, you know, it has to be indisputable video evidence. And it's where the football is, too. It's, right. not, I think it's, it's not Logan yeah. Thomas's helmet yeah. crossing the plane because it looks like it does. Yeah. It's the football and where that is. Which we can't see. In terms of his momentum. You know, I got to think, if you're Frank Beamer right now with a 250-pound quarterback, 55-pound quarterback. Same hey, play. Just, yeah, quarterback sneak again. Same play. There are some that ordinarily aren't big fans of the quarterback sneak, but I think that the size of Thomas might change that thinking at times. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Fourth down. And you've got multiple options here, you know, under center and the snap and the sneak. You go back and you can put him in that shotgun Jesse and I were talking about, and you have a fullback that leads in there for you. You're going to take the ball and put it off the goal line and snap it back. No, I just told you the there? options. I told you the I'm options. Okay. I get under the center and I snap it okay. and sneak it. I was going to say you're not being true to your roots there. <laughs> no, I hate that. Fourth and goal. <laughs> Thomas tries it again, and this time wedges his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Touchdown. Logan Thomas with his seventh rushing touchdown of the season, and with the extra point, the Hokies will tie it up. Georgia Tech did not help themselves setting this touchdown up. Remember the fumbled snap by Tevin Washington, drop pass by Orwin Smith, a shanked punt. Virginia Tech was right on their back doorstep. Only had to drive 36 yards. Had to try four times after having first and goal at the one, but the fourth time turned out to be the charm. As Tony Jernell puts through the extra point, and Virginia Tech. And his big sophomore quarterback has pulled even with the Yellow Jacket 7-7 in Atlanta. Just two races remain to crown a champion. Three points separate Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart in the fight for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues with the Cobalt Tools 500 in Phoenix. Coverage on ESPN starts Sunday at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Kevin Harvick, Matt Kenseth, Brad Keselowski in the top five. Harvick within striking distance if everything goes just right. Carl Edwards, who, like David Wilson, has been known to do backflips, so I've only seen Carl do one sort of off the car door, whereas... David Wilson can do multiple ones. Al Groh's defense was put in a difficult position after the short 30-yard punt. The fumbled snap, as Jesse mentioned. As a result, Virginia Tech turns it into a 36-yard drive for a touchdown. And Justin Meyer, who has 22 touchbacks on the season for Virginia Tech, is set to kick it away. Lining kick. Orwin Smith, who dropped the pass earlier, was eaten up by that kickoff. Now Orwin has it. Let's see if the coverage broke down for the Hokies. And Orwin dropped the football again. The official coming over from the near side, marking it down. And Georgia Tech will maintain possession. Orwin's had a couple of adventures tonight trying to hang on to the football. You can't catch this thing with your hands. A, a, a rocket like that coming at you. You have to use your body as a backstop. And then just hold on to the football. He's got a really, that's, I mean, that's close to ball coming out before he hits the ground. Counter look, Kevin Washington picks up about three. Let's take a look at tonight's intelligent move brought to you by Mercedes. Kevin Washington making audibles at the line of scrimmage, even ones that head coach Paul Johnson does not agree with this time right here on his touchdown run, seeing a key in the defense, making the adjustment on the move. It's only an intelligent move if it works. Otherwise, Paul Johnson would have him. <laughs> Paul might have debated the tag of intelligent. 
Washington hit and knocked down Derek Hopkins, 300-pound sophomore in the backfield. But Foster said his defense has to start fast and play fast. Watch the defensive line. The four bodies getting across the line of scrimmage. They are coming over the line. They are coming after Georgia Tech. They've got them thinking right now. Derek Hopkins just beat the center, Jay Finch, on that play to make the tackle. You know, Derek Hopkins' older brother, Antoine Hopkins, was injured early this season. Older brother named Hop. Antoine, or Derek's nickname, Skip. Younger brother nicknamed Jump. I kid you not, Tevin Washington. Flips it into a crowd. He was looking for Embry Peoples. Kyle Fuller was applying the heat. And it'll be fourth and seven. Crowd wanted a pass interference. Now this is one of those situations where for Paul Johnson on a third and long, throwing the football is not what he wants to be doing. And I think he's got to now make the adjustment to Bud Foster, who's been winning at the line of scrimmage. There's no deflection. There's no tip there. There's a lot of contact. A lot of contact and there. Anton Axon, the defensive back, probably fortunate the flag did not come out. Sean Poole had the 30-yard punt last time, set to kick it away. Low kick. Daron Hosley was unable to get up and get it. It'll go out of bounds at the 30-yard line after the 37-yard punt. Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech tied at seven. You know, it's often joked that half the streets in Atlanta have some variant of peach tree in their name. In fact, 71 streets have some type of variant of peach tree. So if you echoed the words of the legendary Braves announcer, Ernie Johnson, and said, write down peach tree, you'd need a little bit more, be a little bit more specific. That's why I got lost jogging downtown yesterday. <laughs> Every street had peach tree in it. I couldn't find my way back to the hotel. Well, look at the Peach State football in Georgia this week. Our game tonight, Georgia and Auburn over between the hedges. We have a top 10 showdown in the FCS, Georgia Southern. That's Paul Johnson's old school. Is David Wilson. Great speed. Knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Wilson, a pickup of 26. So in part important that your secondary, especially in the run support, comes up and fills their hole. Rashad Reed that right time, that time he came from the secondary. Watch him come up in there. He's get, he gets to the spot in the alley and misses a tackle. You got to go through the legs of David Wilson. It's all part of run fitting and perfect run defense. You have to be in the creases and cover those up. Wilson again gets away from the couch. Here. Wilson turns the corner and gets down inside the 40-yard line. Run out of bounds by Lewis Young as we check in with Wendy Nix. Reese, thank you. Houston and Tulane also in action tonight. Here, the Cougars already with the 7-0 lead. But keep an eye on Patrick Edwards. He is on the move. A 70-yard punt return. Edwards had just 65 return yards all season long. Houston with a two-touchdown lead over Tulane. All right, Wendy, David Wilson breaking into the Georgia Tech secondary and carrying guys with him inside the 20. And now Wilson was out last series. He's had runs of 26 and 16 on this drive. It's a combination of speed and power. Virginia Tech making the majority of their yardage in this game outside. But you see David Wilson, ability to break arm tackles. Craig said you, said you have to bring your legs to bring him down. Their ability to run the football is now forcing a lot of gold helmets close to the line of scrimmage. Well, the busted place, when Georgia Tech had a chance for the tackle for no gain or for a loss, they missed. Now David Wilson's getting lathered up. That defense will start getting tired. They've already had 29 snaps now for Virginia Tech in this ball game. Back to Wilson. David has a big hole. Wilson driving down. 10-yard line as we check in with Jen Brown. Well, Reese, if you guys remember, Al Gro told us that in watching tape on Wilson, the biggest mistake the defenders made was not taking the correct angle. So that was this defense's focus all this week, was making and taking the proper angles to tackling Wilson and not letting him get that speed. It seems to be working so far for them tonight. Right now, Wilson, four carries for 60 yards on this drive. He's getting close. To 100 in the first half, sitting at 84. 
Logan Thomas. He's knocked down by Steven Sylvester. It'll be second and goal. The thing about David Wilson that's so impressive is the power in his lower body. You know, we saw the spin move, Jesse, just a moment ago. They couldn't tackle him. Expect that from a triple jumper here on the track team. You know, we got to give credit also to Virginia Tech's offensive line. Four seniors up front combined 143 starts. They create a lot of these lanes for David Wilson, Josh Oglesby to run through as well. And, and now Al Gross going to have to change up on defense. He's going to have to start pinning his ears back and coming because sitting back and receiving is not working. Thomas. Oh, threw it behind Wilson. David spun around and got his hands on it. Puts it on the money. Wilson might score. I think this is poor mechanics from Logan Thomas. He sees that he has Wilson out there and got lazy with his body. See that? Look, see how open, little opening was there, Jesse? I think this is a big critical third down in this game right now for Georgia Tech. You have to be conscious of the fact Logan Thomas could take off and run with the football right here. This is a great area of the field for quarterbacks to run and have success. Logan Thomas has already burned them a couple times tonight on third down. Yeah, this is a running, this is a running formation. He's almost like a tailback now, Logan Thomas. Thomas into the end zone. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. It's Jarrett Boykin. Boykin is Virginia Tech's all-time leader in catches and in receiving yards. And he has his fourth touchdown catch of the night. David Wilson and the Hokies go up by Jared, score. Jared Boykin here just going to run a double move and a stutter. You see three Georgia Tech defenders guarding right in front of the goal line. Nobody in the back end. Jared Boykin able to use the stutter move and get behind the secondary. Mel's on for the extra point. He puts it through in the number 10 team in the land. The Hokies falling behind 7-0. Put a couple of touchdowns on the board. Celebrating its seventh year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.5 million dollars in scholarship money. Virginia Tech just scored its second touchdown of the night. One thing that the Hokies have not done well this year is score touchdowns in the red zone. But Paul Johnson has seen Logan Thomas and Virginia Tech get in the red zone twice tonight and score two touchdowns. Virginia Tech just over 54% coming into the game. It's 93rd in the country. The Hokies have a 14-7 lead. Roland Smith is driven into the end zone, and Georgia Tech will start on his 20-yard line. So we've got 4 minutes, 21 seconds remaining in the first half, and after a very impressive opening drive from Georgia Tech, Yellow Jackets really haven't been able to get much done on offense. Only three possessions, and Paul Johnson is one of those mathematicians in his mind, and he knows he's only going to get so many times to, to hold on to the football. And so that's why he goes for it on fourth down a lot of times. Paul Johnson is outstanding, guys, at adjustments over the course of a game. He'll see how you're trying to defend his spread option attack, start making those adjustments. Let's see if he can get him back on track here. Washington wanting to take a deep shot, and he does. Firing out, and it's caught by Tyler Melton. Melton catches it over J. Ron Hosley. You might remember last year, Washington threw for Melton, trying to tie the game in the waning seconds, and it was intercepted. This time, they pick up 41. First down is an alert down for this Virginia Tech defense when it comes to throwing the football. In fact, Georgia Tech throws it 33% of the time on first down. They have to be anticipating those type of plays. Give to the B-back, that's Preston Lyons, and the senior from here in Atlanta pushes forward, and it's just inside the 35-yard line. It'll be second down. Bud Foster, the previous two series, had come with a lot of defensive linemen. He covered up the offensive line of Georgia Tech. He's come out in this series back the way he started the deal with only four up front, so maybe there's more of a comfort for Georgia Tech's O-line in this floor. Lyons. Might have picked up one. It'll be third down and four. 
J.R. Collins making the stop. This spread option attack for Georgia Tech is a four down offense. These little games up the middle don't look like much, but if Georgia Tech can get seven yards in three plays, they're going for it on fourth down. This is the ultimate lull you to sleep offense. It's boring, it's fullback, fullback. All of a sudden it's a midline quarterback where he's throwing the ball. Here on third down, the team that leads the nation in third down conversions. Left it again for the Lions. And where they're going to mark it, Lions is going to be just a little bit short, but to Jesse's point, well, pretty good mm. spot. Let's see. I think they're going to bring it out and measure, but at any rate, um, Paul Johnson, one would think, with their field goal kicking issues and his propensity for going on fourth down is going to go either way. And, the, and, and to the point of lulling you to sleep, it's fatiguing for a defense. You you can't be on your game every snap without falling asleep. You have to have tremendous focus. And we heard Jen interview Frank Beamer at the start of the game and him say, you know, you have to take the right steps each and every snap. Assignment football. You have to play a play, clear the mechanism, and then reset and refocus. It's the mental toll this offense takes on you defensively that's so tough. Good spot and a good lunch from the Lions. Gave Georgia Tech the first down. And the Jackets from just inside the Virginia Tech 30. Quick toss. Jones. Roddy Jones steps and picks his way. For a short gain, it'll be second down as we're inside two and a half minutes to play in the first half. During, during the two-game losing streak for Georgia Tech, they couldn't get to the perimeter. And, and, and you see now the speed of that Virginia Tech defense trying to stop them from getting out there. But it's an offense that has to have balance. They can't just be an inside offense and be successful. Option. Washington still has it. Washington is dragged down by Jack Tyler. Picked up a couple, it'll be third down. But Craig, they don't know what they're gonna be week in, week out, because the defense predicates who gets the football in this offense. All these great running backs Georgia Tech has, all these playmakers, nobody knows whose night it's going to be. You have to wait and find out, see what the defense takes away. Well, right now, the defense is doing a heck of a job on the inside of getting off blocks after they've lost their key, and then providing pursuit to the football. Okay, showing a little pressure. Fuller came. Washington pulled it down. It'll be fourth down. Tevin might have picked up one or two. Derek Hopkins made the stop. So now the clock continues to run. Let's Paul Johnson dial up for this one on fourth and five. That surprised me there. Uh, on third down, trying to throw the football. Uh, you know, you know th that was a call draw. That last play was actually a call draw. He was supposed to run that. So now you set up, I think this is a passing situation. Whether you move the pocket with Tevin Washington, get him outside, present a high completion throw potentially to an outbreaking route to either Orwin Smith, Roddy Jones, one of those A-backs. Yeah. But they haven't been efficient tonight. We've seen drop passes. This is, a, this is a time, critical time in this game. They gotta pick it up. Washington two of four throwing. We'll see if Johnson has a pass play in his arsenal for this fourth down play as we check in with Wendy Nix in the studio. Reese, thank you. Coming up in the Walmart halftime report, we will have a live report from Penn State. You'll also hear from interim head coach Tom Bradley and a check on the undefeated Houston Cougars in action tonight against Tulane. We'll see you back at the half. Okay, Wendy, we have a 105 to play here in the first half in Atlanta. Don't forget on Saturday, Brandon Whedon and Oklahoma State after winning that wild game at home against Kansas State on Saturday night. They go on the road to Lubbock to take on Texas Tech. Cincinnati's leading the Big East, undefeated in conference play. They take on West Virginia. You see those games Saturday at noon on ABC. You can also see them on WatchESPN.com. Watch ESPN app. Fourth and five now is Georgia Tech. Tries to get a score before the half. may use another timeout if they can't draw them all sides. All the shifting. Play clock at five. And Johnson walks down to the official and calls the timeout. So Paul wanted to see if he could get the free five yards. Instead, he's going to have to find a way to earn it. 105 to go in the first half at Georgia Tech. 
At here at Bobby Dodd Stadium, after failing to draw Virginia Tech offside, Paul Johnson is going to go with the field goal with Justin Moore. It's a 41-yard attempt, and after having made just one field goal in the last four games, Moore knocks one through from 41, and the Yellow Jackets get three for the half. I think Georgia Tech is really fortunate to have 10 points on four possessions. Virginia Tech's defense has played a good ball game and frustrating Georgia Tech's triple option tonight. I'm watching that field goal and I'm holding my breath. That's been no easy task for Georgia Tech this year. That was Justin Moore's season long right there on that kick. Spent time this offseason working with the NFL's all-time leading scorer, Morton Anderson, here in Atlanta. Trying to protect that swing. That's a big field goal. Get this thing to 14-10 here. Hopefully 14-10 going in at half. Well, Georgia Tech's had a couple of field goals blocked, and by reputation, Virginia Tech, of course, has made its living on Beamer ball blocking kicks, but they only have one blocked kick this year. In fact, Virginia Tech, over the last three years, they've only blocked four kicks, and the special teams for the Hokies probably not quite what it's been in years past. Well, you can't fire the special teams coach. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he's the head ball coach. <laughs> Hence the name Beamer Ball. <laughs> Very curious to see if Georgia Tech kicks this football off to David Wilson. Back returning right now. Such a critical juncture in this game at the half. Remember, he took 190 yards to the house last year in this game. It was critical. David Scully is the kickoff man, and the ball falls off the tee. So whether his intentions were to kick it to David or not, We'll have to wait and find out. Got a little bit of a breeze, but probably not strong enough necessarily to blow the ball off the tee. That's mighty hard to do. That's like a golfer. Once that club head goes back, in, at least in my game, it's coming forward. <laughs> oh, Scully will try it again as Wilson waits at his five. Scully kicks it short. The up back takes it. Chase Williams carries it across the 35-yard line. So 56 seconds for Logan Thomas and the Hokies. Yeah, I said in the open that I thought Logan Thomas was, a, was the key guy for this football team, not just the offense. Third down runs in this ball game has allowed them to convert and then go in to score the points. And it's also been his arm. The composure after throwing a bad one to the flat on the previous attempt to David Wilson, he shows the composure with a nice throw. Thomas, three out of seven. He's run for 31. Tevin Washington's two out of four. Didn't have a big drop. 56 seconds for Thomas to use that big arm. He fires a dart to Danny Cole. Cole's still on his feet. Danny Cole on his way. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. How about that answer? 63 yards on Cole's first catch of the night. This coaching staff has tremendous confidence in their sophomore quarterback, Logan Thomas, throwing the football up four points with one minute to go in the half. It's a waggle to the right. It looked as if Logan might want to throw it back to the other sideline, but Danny Cole, the best route runner of this receiving group, doing a nice job working his way into the middle of the field, and the effort after the catch. Wow. Extra point is up and good. A one-play touchdown drive over the course of the season. That's sort of been the dom domain of Georgia Tech. They've done that eight times. One play, 63 yards. The touchdown for Virginia Tech, big, because the Yellow Jackets get the ball to start the second half. So they answered that last score with another one, and Georgia Tech now two scores down again. Take a look at this design here on this last touchdown. Two safeties going to split in the middle of the field, and Danny Cole is just going to do a nice job working his way into the middle of the field for this touchdown. The arm strength on Logan Thomas is off the charts. 90% of the starting quarterbacks in the National Football League can't complete that pass with the zip that Logan Thomas just executed. But for me, what happened here is Al Groh's defense took the play off. They only rushed four, and that and that rush was a lackadaisical effort. It wasn't going and being the aggressive Algo defense that has made them competitive. And so that allowed that play, that slow developing play to establish. And then, Jesse, to your point on the route, 
How about Cole? Once he got back to the middle, he went skinny right up the field, and the ball was where it was supposed to be thrown. Money. It's ACC Coastal Battle, Virginia Tech leading that division. It's only ACC loss coming at the hands of Clemson at home, a team that Georgia Tech beat in its last game. A Hokies win tonight would eliminate the Yellow Jackets and Miami, for that matter, from the ACC Coastal Race. And with 44 seconds remaining in the first half, Virginia Tech has a 21-10 lead. Georgia Tech has it at the 20. BCS standings brought to you by Discover LSU. For winning in overtime against Alabama holds on to the top spot. Oklahoma State moves up a spot. And right now the Crimson Tide is in front of Stanford, but that's going to shake itself out this weekend. If Stanford beats Oregon, they'll probably jump the Crimson Tide this week. If not, at some point, as long as they remain undefeated. Yeah, and I think Boise State playing TCU, there's a lot of eyeballs watching that ball game because University of Houston's kind of lingering around in that unbe unbeaten territory as well. Kevin Washington has the first down and he gets down at the 35 and now 36 seconds left as the Yellow Jackets will see them go into a hurry up offense. And while Kevin Washington is a spread option quarterback here at Georgia Tech, his background in high school was in the spread you're used to seeing with a lot of throwing. So Kevin used to cutting it loose and he does here and he puts it right on the money to Tyler Melton. Melton's second catch of the night. Close to midfield, clock will stop to move the chain. Spread option offense forces defenses to play single high safety looks. They need to get players close to the line of scrimmage to stop the run plays. That allows for more vanilla looks to throw into if you're Tevin Washington. Top of the field, Stephen Hill will have no help. He's by himself, throw it deep. Washington trying to get it to him. Does he have enough arm? He does! Stephen Hill has it at the 10. 12 seconds remaining. Georgia Tech has one timeout. 41 yards on the pickup. How about this end of the first half? Well, I said that because there was no safety to help the corner out there. He was on an island, Chris Hill, by himself. Oh, well, Stephen Hill makes the big catch. Washington has to deal with 12, and he spikes it. He nine seconds to go in the first half. Chris Hill with inside leverage here, trying to cover Stephen Hill. Stephen Hill just gets behind him and just pretty much out physicals the corner for the football. Austin did, did a nice job breaking contain, getting outside. Look, you see Bud Foster in the background <laughs> jumping up and down. You know, that's been the Achilles heel of this Virginia Tech defense this year, giving up big pass plays. They've given up 37 pass plays of 20 yards or more. They give up another big one there. And I think what Bud Foster was talking to, he was trying to say, hey, you've got containment. Get up the field. You can't let Tevin Washington get to the outside so he can throw that ball up. Okay, here's the second and goal play. Pressure coming from Washington's back, and he's sacked. Georgia Tech has to use his timeout. Tariq Edwards getting the sack, and while there are three seconds remaining, the one thing about this spread option attack, and they have been effective throwing the ball at times, big plays, long plays, we get in the red zone a little tougher to throw out of this offense. There's Tariq Edwards coming off the right side. Nobody gets out to get him. Uzi, the right guard, was supposed to kick out, but too much speed coming off the edge because of the sack. Georgia Tech now forced to use their final timeout, and Craig, they have to kick a field goal here. They're lucky to have a chance to kick a field goal for three points here. Georgia Tech, not an offense you think could score very quickly. They had 10 touchdowns drives that had taken a minute or less heading into this game. They can get down the field in a hurry with explosive plays, give Virginia Tech defensively some credit for bowling up when they needed to. Justin Moore. 36 and Moore puts it through. So as time runs out here in the first half, Moore gets a field goal. And you know what? Georgia Tech did a terrific job managing the clock for that drive to get three on the board as we go down to Jen Brown, who's with Paul Johnson. Coach, you had some early success on that opening scoring drive and then two field goals there. How do you finish right. your drives? Well, we just got to get the ball. We got to get them off the field. They, uh, they've they been really efficient on offense. When we get it, we got to be more efficient, but we got to get them off the field. You talked about wanting to contain Wilson. He's got 84 rushing yards. What do you need to do to slow him down in the second half? Well, we've got to get some help out of the secondary, evidently, because we're not stopping them up front. All right, thanks, Coach. Reese? All right, Jen, so the field goal drawing closer for Georgia Tech as they try to stay alive in the ACC Coastal Race. Virginia Tech with a 21-13 lead. The strike from Thomas to Cole, the third touchdown, as we join Mark Lewin, Wendy, in the studio.
Welcome back to ESPN's College Football Primetime, served by Applebee's. Getting set for the start of the third quarter is a rambling wreck. Leads the Yellow Jackets on to Grant Field at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Yellow Jackets trailing Virginia Tech 21-13. This is a key battle in the ACC Coastal Race. If Virginia Tech wins, Georgia Tech will be eliminated from the race. One of those two teams has represented the Coastal in every ACC championship game. Reese Davis, Craig James, Jesse Palmer here, Jim Brown down working on the field. We look at a little offensive explosion late in the first half from both teams. I'd say for Georgia Tech, their secondary is playing nowhere near as well as they played against Clemson when they came up and really made plays and challenged receivers. I think that is where this football team's got to pick up the pace. I think Georgia Tech has to make some adjustments on defense here in this third quarter. They have to do a better job tackling at the point of attack, not allowing David Wilson to get into the second level, running the football. Keep in mind, Georgia Tech has outscored their opponents 88 to 21 in the third quarter of games this year. They need a big quarter. They're going to get the football back first. Well, the 123 yards passing from Virginia Tech, more than half of that coming on the 63-yard strike from Logan Thomas to Danny Cole late in the half. Georgia Tech answered with a 41-yard pass from Tevin Washington to Stephen Hill to set up a late field goal. And that's where we are as the second half is underway. Orwin Smith for the second time tonight mishandles the kickoff. But Orwin finds some running room. He has largely been bottled up in the offensive line. He'll be stopped at the 26-yard line. As we take a look at our coaching adjustments brought to you by Home Depot. I think, you know, Jesse, we both talked about this at halftime. The secondary's got to come up and do a better job of filling the lane and tackling David Wilson. They have to be able to stop David Wilson with only seven players in the box. They do not want to sacrifice a safety down low because then that start creates one-on-one -on -one opportunities for Jared Boykin, Danny Cole, and these big playmakers on the perimeter of the field. It is going to be 15 more as Jack Tyler hit him several steps out of bounds. A little, little jawing going on in the sidelines. <laughs> Referee Brad Allen's Mike not working but Jack Tyler the sophomore a little too exuberant well, Jack Tyler is getting his first career start tonight in front of Barquell Rivers because the coaching staff believes he's a better run defender but he's gonna have to be a smart player that's just a bad bad decision there on the very first snap here in second half yeah Bud Foster gave him the nod wanting him to be able to run to the ball but you got to be smart about that you got to understand and this Georgia Tech offense now has to take advantage of every opportunity they can and out from the 47-yard line, Kevin Washington for the second time tonight has trouble getting the snap. This time it was from the starting center, Jay Finch. Earlier tonight, he mishandled one from Nick McRae, the other center. One thing I noticed here, this offensive line came off the ball on that snap. Now, they didn't do that much in the first half. They were being beaten up front. They call themselves the goon squad. But they're going to have to be a bunch of goons. It's like a hockey term. The John Saunders is of the world. <laughs> he was a goon, wasn't he? He was a goon. He owns the goon squad. <laughs> it's like slap shot. <laughs> Option. Washington keeps it. First down and more. Washington inside the 20-yard line in Georgia Tech on a roll early in the second half. Eddie Whitley knocked him down and pick up a 35 for the Yellow Jacket quarterback. Talked about Paul Johnson able to make adjustments here on the fly. A counter option now. It's another wrinkle in this option game for Georgia Tech. And Tevin Washington, the guy that had runs of 46 yards and 58 yards against Clemson a few weeks back, he's got the ability to take the ball a long way down the field. 64 yards rushing tonight. Give inside to the B-back. Preston Lyons, a short gain as we check in with Jen Brown. Well, Reese, before the game, Frank Beamer expressed some concern for his defense because so few players had actually seen the triple option offense. He told me out of the half, my defense is playing exactly the way I want them to play. I'm happy with the adjustments they made after that first scoring drive. And look, Jen, we want them to throw the ball. We don't want them to run the ball. He can't be happy with that last play there. But uh, all in all, he said he's happy with what his defense has done the first half. And the give to Lions. Third and five or six. Keep, 
you know, keep in mind, Tevin Washington is the key component to this triple option offense. And that right there, I mean, I'm not so certain that he's not supposed to pull the ball there and move on around the line of scrimmage because the fullback play was stopped by three or four Virginia Tech defenders. It is so critical that Tevin Washington make good decisions, not just when he's throwing the football, but when making decisions on the move in this option offense, reading the keys appropriately, putting the direction, the play in the right direction. Left it with the fullback. Lions has the first down inside the five. First and goal for the Yellow Jackets. Preston Lions, a transfer from Colgate, doing a nice job, tough running on the inside, Craig. Yeah, let's see if we can find out why he gave it to the fullback. Look in here. Look, there's your little seam. You see that crease right there? Let's see if he has given it. Excellent job blocking down and giving the ball to the fullback. This is an area of the field. Georgia Tech never throws the football on defense you were anticipating probably four runs in a row here score touchdown 75 percent of the time in the red zone washington stopped short second and goal An impressive answer in this game, you know, going back and forth now, the last several possessions between these two offenses, just marching up and down the field. Yeah, and again, this smaller front of Virginia Tech, this is not a unit built for short yardage goal line, especially from the half yard line. Washington drives it into the end zone, touchdown Jackets. Washington with his second short touchdown run of the night, and now Georgia Tech trails by two. Now, it's early, it's short yardage. I would kick the ball. Absolutely. Don't chase points this early. However, here's the mindset of Paul Johnson. You know what it is? He Paul always Johnson's gets two yards. I've just gone down the field. Virginia right. Tech has not done anything to show me they're going to stop us. He's got momentum. He's going for it. Stephen Hill in motion. Washington quarterback draw, and it's unsuccessful. Now, here's why I would not have gone for two. If Virginia Tech scores again, a touchdown, you're down two scores. If you kick it, you're still down one. But that's why Paul Johnson gets paid the big bucks on the sidelines. As it is, the big drive gets Georgia Tech to within a deuce. <laughs> Here is the legendary John Heisman, who coached here at Georgia Tech in the early 1900s, once beat Cumberland 222 to nothing. Of course, the sta stadium named after the great Bobby Dodd, who had a winning percentage of over 700. And Paul Johnson, now in his fourth year at Georgia Tech, chasing those two legendary coaches in a winning percentage. John Johnson took over a situation that had been a little bit up and down on the flats. But when the game gets close, the Yellow Jackets have come through 12 and 3 in games decided by five points or fewer. They are 1 and 1 this year with a win against Maryland and a loss to Virginia in close games. Got a close one here tonight. Grand Field at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Yellow Jackets just scored a touchdown with their first possession of the second half. And now the Hokies get it back. Tony Gregory returning the kickoff. Gregory takes some big hits as he crosses the 20-yard line. It's an ACC Coastal battle we're enjoying tonight, and Saturday night we'll see the Pac-12 North battle between Oregon and Stanford. Cardinals still undefeated, riding the nation's longest winning streak at 17 in a row. Their only loss last year coming at the hands of the Oregon Ducks. Andrew Luck with Michael James. Stanford a little bit beat up at the tight end position. These two go head-to-head. -head. Luck leading contender for the Heisman Trophy throw for over 2,400 yards, 25 touchdowns. While uh, Michael leading the nation in rushing in terms of average per game, and he has 10 touchdowns. And he seems to be okay after an injured elbow that we saw him suffer in Oregon's game against Cal. Well, now here's Virginia Tech now back-to-back -back big time penalties. This team is next to last in the ACC at 49 yards a game in penalties, allowing Georgia Tech to really push them back in the field position. 
Riley Vieira was called for the personal foul. Second personal foul of the second half as David Wilson has hit for a loss of a couple. Here's what happened that back to Virginia Tech up with a personal foul. Number 32, as you keep an eye on the arrows, nothing wrong there, but that one probably got it. You know, this game has the feel of a playoff game. All the players we talked to at Georgia Tech made reference to it as an ACC semifinal game. The last six winners of this contest have gone on to play in the ACC championship game. It has that vibe right now. Slant, Boykin dropped it. Boykin's got those huge hands. Nobody's caught more passes at Virginia Tech in the history of the school than Boykin. Should have had that one. He'll be the first to tell you that. Oh, absolutely. He's a go-to man when he gets a one-on-one -on -one or any kind of loose coverage on the outside. He hasn't dropped many in his career. And third and 11, Jesse, this is just what Al Groh's looking for. This is where for Virginia Tech. You're getting ready for the toolbox right here. You do not know what kind of look you're going to get. Georgia Tech will move guys around, try and confuse them. They're showing blitz right now. I anticipate they'll back out. Thomas threw two interceptions against the blitz against Duke last week, and here it comes. Picked up nicely. Thomas firing for Cole, and Cole, did he hold on to it? He did. A big play on third and 11, and Danny Cole, who had a 63-yard touchdown catch earlier, picks up 34. Jesse, they did come with a blitz. They decided to bring inside five or six. It leaves man-to-man -man on the outside, and it's just a fantastic catch from the school's number two all-time receiver. It's the second time tonight on third and long. Logan Thomas has been able to buy time by drifting and hit a big matchup one-on-one -on -one outside. Early in the game, he found Jared Boyk, and this time he finds Danny Cole. Danny Cole made big plays tonight. Wilson, it's absolutely nothing. Quayshawn Neely, the first guy, They're trying to strip the ball away. Julian Burnett is advocating his cause, but the official steps right in. And the Hokies have it, and it's second down and long. Yeah, one of the things as a runner is when you start stretching and going for second and third effort, and it, and it works a lot of the times, but it's that one out of 25 carries you spend fighting and you lose the football. I used to have a coach tell me one time, Ron Meyer, he said, if you fumble, Craig, and lose it, it's like losing 50 yards. These teams are battling right now, both understanding what's at stake in this game tonight. Every inch, every possession, every mistake, crucial. Tailback formation here for Logan Thomas. Thomas pitched it. It was a low pitch to David Wilson. Wilson scooped it up. Very fortunate to get it back. Jeremiah Tauchu, the first to hit Wilson. Dangerous. I don't, think, I don't think Virginia Tech practices the option play as often as Georgia Tech. It doesn't look as clean and as crisp. You see David Wilson coming back in motion, setting up the relationship. Logan Thomas originally had tucked the football as if he was going to carry it. It's difficult to put it back in the pitch hand and execute it properly. You saw that quarterback halfback pitch relationship. That was poor. He was too far away. He wasn't where he was supposed to be. Hokies have been good on third down tonight. They just picked up 34. Nobody with their hand on the ground right now. Flags. And there's a false start on Virginia Tech. False start. Offense, number 18. Five-yard penalty. Third down. DJ Cole's a receiver. There's a tremendous chess match going on tonight between Georgia Tech defensive coordinator Al Groh, who used to be the head coach at Virginia for nine years, has played against Frank Beamer for 10 seasons, understands their tendencies. Mike O'Kane, play calling tonight for Virginia Tech. All these coaches very familiar with each other, having been at different stops around the ACC. Michael Kane, formerly head coach at North Carolina State, worked on the staff at Clemson. Thomas on third and 11, fires a dart. Coles, who just caught for the penalty, catches the pass, and Coles is still on his feet inside the 20-yard line, and another big pickup on third and long, this time 38 yards. Logan Thomas has rhythm in the pocket, only a four-man rush, and again, Jesse, another precise throw. 
You've seen it now twice where in the middle of the field, the ball is on the money, on the line, and with velocity. To Tremendous it. composure on critical downs for Virginia Tech. Not just throwing the football, running it as well. They're now seven for 10 on third down. That is an outstanding percentage. Back to the ground to Wilson. Now David finds a way to run over and falls on the ground. Georgia Tech has it. And Isaiah Johnson, who's had a little bit of a rough night tackling, pounces on that football, his second fumble recovery of the year. David Wilson, again, is a guy that had three fumbles coming in, and he's really had a, a hard time of going beyond defenders who reach out and slap it from him. This defense had four turnovers against Clemson. It's a very opportunistic group. You see that? You got to pay attention to where the ball or the defenders are around you. Wilson looking for a little space and getting a hand in there and knocking it free was Julian Burnett. Yellow Jackets come up with a stop. ESPN's College Football Primetime brought to you by Hyundai. If it's fuel efficient, affordable, stylish, and safe, it's probably a Hyundai. And Best Buy. And you're looking at Stone Mountain. It's a granite dome at its summit. The elevation nearly 1,700 feet on the north base. Three figures of the Confederate States of America. Stonewall Jackson, Robert E. Lee, and Jefferson Davis carved into the side. Have light shows out there. People come and have picnics. In Bobby Dodd Stadium, there's no picnic for either team right now. 21-19. Kevin Washington pitches it to Orwin Smith. And Smith, who came into the night averaging more than 11 yards per carry, has been largely bottled up. David Wilson's had some good runs, but he just had a costly fumble a moment ago. Julian Barnett knocking it free, and Wilson was distraught on the sideline. It's Logan Thomas over the big fella, giving his star running back a little love. If there is been an Achilles heel for Thomas this year. It has been putting the ball on the ground, and that was a costly one as Virginia Tech was on the move. David Sims back in the B-back position. We've seen a lot of Preston Lyons tonight. He gets a second down carry, and now Georgia Tech looking at a third down on the season. The Yellow Jackets lead the nation, converting more than 50% of the time. They'll need four here. Virginia Tech needs to stop giving up big plays right now on defense. On their last two series, they've given up a big completion to Stephen Hill, a long run by Tevin Washington. If they're going to score, make them go 12-14 plays to do so. It's a quick toss to Smith. Across the 35, and he's hit hard, and he's marked out of bounds. Short of the 30-yard line. But enough for the first down, Eddie Whitley. Here's Paul Johnson finding a way to get to the perimeter, the jet sweep, and basically he takes a fullback away that took a linebacker from pursuit and gets the block. He's got confidence out there, Jesse, with the wide receivers blocking corners. you got to be able to do that in this offense, no doubt about it. The perimeter blocking, just as important as anything else with regards to interior schemes. Back to the option. Not much for Sims. It's up to maybe three. But Craig, second down. Craig, you know what I mean? It's difficult to score touchdowns when you have to drive at 12, 14 plays. With the amount of times the football changes hands in this offense, be that on a dive or a pitch, there's a lot of opportunities for something bad to happen. And, that, and that's that's Virginia Tech. That's got to be their mentality. Don't give up explosive plays. Yeah, last year they had a problem with putting it on the ground a lot. I mean, at times it was a basketball team dribbling it around. Back to the option. Great pitch by Washington. And running free is Peoples. What a tremendous. Kevin Washington making like Jamel Holloway from the old Oklahoma days. A magician on the pitch to get it to Peoples for a pickup at 39. The flip side of that, Jesse, is if you're on a long drive, that forces the defense to be responsible, play in and play out. Watch here how the Virginia Tech defense get caught all inside and all on the ground. And they forgot their keys, their responsibilities, and they get the edge for the offense. Kevin Washington said it took him a little while to get the hang of the option. Looked pretty good there. Here he goes again. Looks good again. Washington inside the 10. 
driving for the end zone. He slammed out of bounds, but it'll be first and goal for the Jackets. Georgia Tech is executing their spread option offense to perfection. There is a reason. They rep it 45 to 50 times live in practice every single day. Tevin Washington making the appropriate decisions pre-snap. Great pull, great fake off to the race. You see 24 there, Tyreek Edwards, the linebacker. He went for the fake and ended up getting no one. And that's where they talk about responsibilities and keys. You got one guy, go get him. Let somebody else do their job. Georgia Tech looking to take the lead. Washington looking for his third touchdown, and he has it. Reese, does that make up for going for two? No. Here's why. Again, I don't know. <laughs> he's going to kick it here, and the lead is going to be five. <laughs> it, it said it could be six. It comforts that decision. Certainly better than not scoring again, if you're looking at it from Georgia Tech's standpoint. Georgia Tech on top, 26-21 is the Yellow Jackets. Cash in after David Wilson's costly fumble. Virginia Tech was in the red zone. And before you knew it, Tevin Washington was in the end zone. Georgia Tech's up. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Georgia Tech has scored 16 straight points. Take a look at underground Atlanta, not far from here, to take a 26-21 lead on Virginia Tech. Here's the difficulty, difficulty of playing this offense. Watch the defensive end come to the inside. That means that Tevin Washington's going to pull it and get around the corner. Now Tarek Edwards, the linebacker, has got to do his job. He has to take the quarterback. He gets caught in the middle between the pitch man and the quarterback. He has to force that football to go outside. He does not. And because of it, Tevin Washington makes the defense pay. Student section bringing some noise. Tony Gregory. Takes the kick at his 10. Gregory just across the 25-yard line. Let's check in with Wendy Nix. Reese, thank you. Time now for the AT&T All-America Player of the Week, and it belongs to Eric Reed from LSU. In the game against Alabama, he had one interception, as you see there, six tackles, a forced fumble in the 9-6 Tiger overtime win. You can vote. Text to 55862 to vote and earn a chance to win a trip to the national championship game. Game-changing play by Eric Reed, ripping the ball away from... Michael Williams, LSU won that game in overtime, got a helmet sticker, college football final as well. Logan Thomas trying to throw to Jared Boykin, it'll be second and ten. You know, Virginia Tech has won 11 straight road games. We're getting deep here in the third quarter right now, and they're down five. Big reason that Frank Beamer attributes their success on the road is because the quarterback has always been very even keel. Tyrod Taylor was that. They believe Logan Thomas is that too. Never gets too high, never gets too low. They need his composure now. David Wilson. Wilson running backwards and too far backwards. Snowed under by a swarm of Yellow Jackets who had the Stingers out ready to go. Rashad Reed, Lewis Young, and a host of Georgia Tech defenders throw Wilson for a huge loss. Look how deep lined up. That's nine and a half yards deep by the tailback. And David Wilson so far back there. Look at that green pasture. By the time he gets there, that allows that defense to come across and really take good angles to you. Sometimes his speed can be a hindrance. He trusts in it too much. There's a time where you have to just accept it's a negative play and get north. He lost more yards than he needed to on that play. Lost nine. Third and 19. Now Thomas trying to use that big arm, and eventually they'll get him on the ground. But Tao Chu wrestling the big 6'6", 255-pounder, and now flags are all over the place. Is there a punch thrown? We'll let the officials sort it out. Georgia Tech had this drive stopped. to the play. 
Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 45, defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. That was a Tauchu who had Thomas wrapped up for the sack. Paul Johnson displeased. What a costly penalty for Georgia Tech. Let's watch this again. Tauchu was the one that hit Logan Thomas initially. Oh, oh there it is. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. No, yeah. no doubt. Now, now think about this. In this game here, in this half, two. 15-yard penalties against Virginia Tech have helped Georgia Tech. They just now gave Georgia Tech a chance. He's lucky he's not tossed out of this game. The yeah, ACC yeah. will review yeah. this, and I'll be shocked if a Tauchu is playing in their next game. Yeah, you get you get a game for a punch, and a Tauchu who Wilson carries the ball, and now Wilson hit the backfield, but he's still on his feet. David Wilson. A Tauchu to the other side makes the tackle again. Wilson picked up five, but back to the point of a Tauchu throwing the punch. What looked like a punch does a forearm shiver. We talked to Jeremiah yesterday. Nice young man. That is a complete loss of composure, and an, uh, that's an unforgivable mistake on the field. I think in our conversation, we, we heard a Tauchu really looking forward to the challenge of going against Logan Thomas and the power. I, and you know what, Reese? It's a between a shiver and a punch. The bad, he just lost his composure. David Wilson. Wilson! Going to lose the field if he can stay on his feet. Wilson inside the 25-yard line. Steven Sylvester hauls him down a pickup of 43, and here come the Hokies. All right, now, from the eye formation, the depth is there. Watch the blocking. Both your guards are pulling and outside. Wilson, a very patient runner, knowing that if he can get a crease with his speed, he's gone. You cannot take a playoff against Virginia Tech offensively because of David Wilson. The last four running plays, Georgia Tech had gotten penetration into the backfield and forced, almost forced, a negative play. A couple mental mistakes. They lose the edge. David Wilson makes it pay. Wilson right on his average, 131 yards on the night. Oglesby in to give him the rest. Oglesby. Oglesby stepped out of bounds. The 18-yard line. He stayed inbounds. He might have scored a touchdown. Paul Johnson was just disgusted with the 15-yard penalty that it gave them the first down because he knew you continue to give Virginia Tech an opportunity to give the ball to David Wilson, and you're going to get burned. The error that Wilson made earlier with the fumble was a physical one. A choose was mental. And it could be very costly. Oglesby slips one in the backfield. Josh still on his feet and the big fella driving down close to first down yardage. He's going to be a little bit short. Bring up a third down play. This is a moment. If you're Julian Burnett, you're the leader of this defense, the team's leading tackler. You get your guys in the huddle. You have a come to Jesus moment right now. Tell these guys, hey, calm down and let's bow up right here. If we can stop them to a field goal, that is a gigantic win for us. This right now, this is the down of the game so far if you're the Georgia Tech defense. Well, Burnett is out of the game at the moment. Logan Thomas has the first down. He's still on his feet and he has the touchdown. They couldn't get him on the ground and it forced him to draw a penalty. Then they couldn't get him on the ground and he scores a touchdown. I think they surprised Georgia Tech's defense with the quarterback sneak. They're in the I formation and I think everyone out there, all 11 players, assumed that David Wilson was going to get the football and they never found a way to get to Logan Thomas's legs. I think they went on a quicker cadence, a quicker yeah. snap count, yeah. also trying to catch that defense off guard. And now here's Virginia Tech going for two, make it a field goal game. 32 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Close enough to the fourth quarter. Proper call by Frank Beamer. Great spot for Logan Thomas to run right here. Thomas just got that snap off and he threw incomplete. So we remain on a 27-26 score, but Virginia Tech is back on top. But Georgia Tech should have been forcing the Hokies to punt. A Tauchu had Thomas stopped and wrapped up for some inexplicable reason. Threw the forearm, got the 15-yard penalty. 
Thomas then drove through the jacket defense and scored the touchdown to put Virginia Tech back on top. And the defense got driven through along the way. Long run by David Wilson, long run by Josh Oglesby. You allow a long quarterback sneak. I mean, that's demoralizing. If you're a defense right now, they must find a way to recapture their composure. Quarterbacks, by the way, have five rushing touchdowns tonight. Devin Washington has three. Thomas has two. Saturday night, the ESPN Networks feature three top ten teams from the SEC in action on ESPN2, 6 o'clock Eastern time. You'll be able to see Arkansas take on the Volunteers of Tennessee, number one LSU at home on ESPNU against Western Kentucky. We'll find running back Bobby Rainey and Alabama still ranked third in the BCS after losing to the Bayou Bengals last week on the road in Starkville to take on Mississippi State. 7.45 Eastern Time, all three games also streaming live on WatchESPN.com, Watch ESPN app. Todd Blackledge is in the house here tonight watching this ball game. He's on his way down to Starkville, Mississippi for that Alabama-Mississippi State ball game. Would not want to be Mississippi State this week after Alabama lost last Saturday. Orland Smith. looking for running room and gets it out to the 22-yard line and with 25 seconds remaining here in the third quarter we have time to check in with Wendy Nix. Reese Sports Center right now a statement from Penn State Athletics due to multiple threats made against assistant coach Mike McQuery. The university has decided it would be in the best interest of all for McQuery not to be in attendance at Saturday's Nebraska game. Sports Center currently airing right now on ESPN2. All right, Wendy, and all of the updates from the unsavory situation at Penn State. They try to recover, and really, everyone in college football trying to find some way to find a little bit of healing from a situation that has been devastating on every level to everyone involved. Winding down in the final seconds of the third quarter, Virginia Tech with a 27-26 lead. Clock strikes zero and will go to the fourth. These two teams, since Paul Johnson have been here, always play it close, and they're doing it again tonight. TV drive to the national championship bus parked here at the flats campus of Georgia Tech on its way to Starkville for Alabama and Mississippi State on ESPN Saturday night here in the ACC we got a good one going Virginia Tech with a 27 26 lead on Georgia Tech as we start the fourth quarter Yellow Jackets scored 16 straight points to take the lead looking at a second and eight Kevin Washington across the 30 yard line it'll bring up he went and visited the Iowa Hawkeyes and their coaching staff who had just held Georgia Tech to 143 yards in the Orange Bowl at the end of the 2009 season. Every year in the last four years, he's added a different wrinkle on defense. He's got his hands full tonight. Yeah, that A-back coming around with a jet sweep pitch. Washington is over 100 yards. Got stopped short of the first down. Needed to get to the 32. About a yard and a half short, Derek Hopkins and Tariq Edwards in to make the stop. And, and that's that Hopkins at 301 pounds. He's the biggest guy on Virginia Tech's defensive line. He got some push that time. He won his back. Guys, this is big for them to get right here. They're going for it on fourth down, not just to keep the drive alive. Their defense had just been on the field a long time in that last possession. But look where we are. Would you do this? He's at his own 31 yard line, fourth mm -hmm. and one, or will he try to draw them offside? He hasn't done it yet. Preston Lyons at the be back. They snap it. Washington took a big hit. I'm not sure he got there. Nope. Virginia Tech coaches along the side, certain that he's not going to get the mark he needed. Yeah, I think they just tried to they tried to quick snap again, but once again, you saw the linebacker support. Hopkins beats his guy. Tarek Edwards gets into the lane. They were trying to attack the bubble in the defense. There was an opening 
over the left guard. Tevin Washington tried to extend the football. This is a critical, critical play here in this game. Nope. He didn't get it. Virginia Tech gets a stop. A huge momentum shift. Bud Foster celebrating with J.R. Collins in his defense. But Craig, I got you're at your own 31-yard line. A lot of time to go in the fourth. Would you've done? Would you've gone for it on fourth? You down? have to understand what how Paul Johnson thinks. He knows that he's only going to have so many snaps. He had five possessions in the first half. He knows that he's not going to get the ball that many times. He has respect for David Wilson and for Logan Thomas. And it's not that he's not confident in his defense. He's a realistic guy. Here's the thing too: if you give up a touchdown, right. it's still only a one possession yes. game. You're down by eight points. So long as Virginia Tech does not capitalize and go for a two point conversion. Okay, they're going to review this to see where the spot should be and as we looked at the replay a moment ago had Tevin Washington had the presence of mind perhaps to extend the ball just as he had maybe would have gotten it but I clearly he's short of the yellow line good point you make there about extending the football but again all, it, this here but you don't want to lose it I understand you know why why you wouldn't but it's a last ditch effort perhaps he could have I, this is going to be I feel certain still Virginia Tech's ball but Jesse I think you made a great point too because had you know we've been talking about this one point versus two point conversion uh, through the second second half if Georgia Tech had scored a touchdown they would have had to go for two anyway to try to make it a seven point game after further review the ruling on the field stands first down Virginia Tech this is where that playoff atmosphere of a football game comes into play. Paul Johnson and this football team as well as Virginia Tech they know what they're playing for and Paul's trying to win the game with what he thinks is his best chances and that's his offense staying on the football field. Earlier tonight Virginia Tech got it inside the 40 on a short punt this time the defense stopped Georgia Tech on downs. Logan Thomas inside the 25 yard line. Now for our conference update brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10 the ACC Coastal Race the two teams you're watching tonight Virginia Tech Georgia Tech and Virginia the primary contenders Virginia Tech with a win could eliminate Georgia Tech the Yellow Jackets still need the Cavaliers to lose again because they lost head to head to them in Charlottesville as flags fly on second down. Yeah, I tell you what mm. snap infraction offense number 74 five yard penalty second down here are the schedules again Virginia plays Duke this week and then a road trip to Florida State and then finishing with Virginia Tech Georgia Tech has, after this game has only a road trip to Duke so this is huge for the Yellow Jackets in terms of trying to position themselves to make it to the ACC championship game Virginia Tech certainly would be in the driver's seat but they can hold on up by one deep in Georgia Tech territory. That mesh lasted a long time with Logan Thomas and Josh Oglesby. Thomas kept it. It'll be third down. We need to get a short four. Very impressed with the play calling by Mike O'Kane in this game for Virginia Tech. They have been so much balance on offense tonight for Virginia Tech. You look at these numbers. 206 rushing yards, a buck 95 through the air, setting up right here, third and four. Yeah, with Oglesby in the backfield, no David Wilson, the number one runner becomes Logan Thomas. Oglesby has it. He's going to be stopped short of the first down by about a yard. Now it's fourth and one for Frank Beamer. Quarterback sneak all day. They haven't stopped it yet with the exception of once on the goal line, but you can make Paul Johnson pay right now. For going for it deep in his own end. See what Frank Beaver does. But if you send out the field goal kicker, and Frank's talking to his field goal kicker, Cody Janelle, right now, and he wants to think this over a minute. Because you do make it make Georgia Tech have to score a touchdown to take the lead. I don't think the kicker expected him to attempt a field goal. He wasn't ready to run on the field. <laughs> Paul Johnson gambled on fourth down in his own end and was stopped by Virginia Tech's defense. Now the Hokies have a fourth and one in the ensuing drive, and Frank Beamer is sending out his offense. Like the call? Love it. Ditto. As long as it's a sneak. It is. Logan Thomas 
Gets the first down easily. Virginia Tech in the red zone is first and ten. Frank Beamer wasn't thinking that Georgia Tech wouldn't score another touchdown. This is a no-brainer here. Georgia Tech, the last several quarterback sneaks, has given up four and five yards to Logan Thomas. Craig, what a what a message Frank Beamer sends to his football team. It's the playoff game. The winner of this game historically goes on to play in Charlotte in the ACC title game. Send a message of confidence to your team and your young quarterback. Oglesby. Hit for a loss. A Tauchu. Difference there is David Wilson has made a Tauchu and these other Georgia Tech defenders miss in the backfield on those plays and extended the plays. And Oglesby can't do that. Another reason I like going for it on fourth down, you get a chance to continue bleeding the clock here late in the game. And Georgia Tech offensively, we've said, not built to rush down the field in spurts and score quick points. Remember now, 80% of the penalties on this football team have happened inside the 30-yard line. This has to be a smart Virginia Tech offense right here. Also had a turnover in this area of the field earlier in the second half. Thomas, pitch to Wilson. Retained well by Georgia Tech. It'll be third down. Julian Burnett out to make the stop. How about that, Jesse, for some speed? That, that right there is the secondary getting to David Wilson on the corner. We've seen in this half more gold helmets in the backfield of Virginia Tech. They've done a much better job with their run fits surrounding David Wilson at the line of scrimmage rather than at the second level. Third and long, high percentage throw here. I'm calling if I'm Mike okay. No unnecessary risks. Well, the quarterback draw right up the middle of the field. Everybody's standing up. Al Groh trying to confuse Thomas. Thomas gets rid of it to the end zone. Drager touchdown. Chris Drager with his first touchdown catch of the year. And it's against Jamea Thomas, who had two interceptions and a forced fumble against Clemson, was the star of that football game. How many times we've seen three times now the defensive backs of Georgia Tech misjudge the jump for a football. Talk about an unlikely hero. Chris Dreger started 11 games as a defensive end last season. That's only his 10th catch on the year. Comes at the biggest moment of the game. The extra point is up and good, and Virginia Tech's lead is now eight. Chris Dreger, who's working on his thesis right now, already has his undergrad degree. Logan Thomas been scoring well too. ESPN's College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. Veterans and active duty military eat free on Veterans Day. And in part by Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. That is the world of Coca-Cola here in Atlanta. More than one million guests per year come through. See exhibits from Coca-Cola bottles from all around the world sample 64 different products Chris Drager who is <laughs> right as he scored his first career touchdown Virginia Tech now with a 34 26 lead on Georgia Tech less than 10 minutes to play here in Atlanta a driving kickoff that gets over Stephen Hill's head Georgia Tech will have it on the 20 as we go back to the studio on Wendy Nick. Reese, thank you. A check on Houston and Tulane. Really just a check on Charles Sims. A 72-yard touchdown run here. His numbers tonight, 10 carries for 207 yards and two touchdowns. Averaging just over 20 yards per carry. Not bad. Houston up big, 52-10. Well, clearly, Wendy, they're not giving him the ball enough. <laughs> well, they're throwing the ball. 207 <laughs> yards. Wow. Houston's putting up some numbers on offense. These two teams have two. Tevin Washington. Down he goes. James Gale was back there to sack the Yellow Jacket quarterback. I think, you know, it, when you watch the film, Georgia Tech and Paul Johnson will be sick to death. Watch the right side. Roddy Jones over here down the middle of the field, wide open. Tevin Washington's got to find his A back. Look at this. 
beyond everyone. Paul Johnson expects his quarterbacks to complete 50 to 60 percent of their passes because of that reason. Guys run wide open in this offense. David Sims stopped to a short gain. It'll be third and long. You know, Bud Foster took a giant gamble preparing for this game. They had the bye week. They actually had live practices with cut blocks and chop blocks on the outside of the field in preparation for this game. They took tight ends, moved them in at tackle to simulate the speed. T.J. Shaw, the scout team quarterback, got beat up for two weeks. Live full go practices, trying to anticipate what it might be like tonight against the spread offense. Tech needs it on third down. Georgia Tech does, and they won't get it. Kevin Washington slipped. Jack Tyler was applying the pressure. Georgia Tech this time will have to punt from deep in its own end. And the Yellow Jackets are teetering right now. The defense has to come up with a stop. They missed their opportunity on Roddy Jones down the middle of the field. And when you get into a passing must-pass situation, it's a win-win for Bud Foster. John Poole, the punt for Georgia Tech. J. Ron Hosley standing right at the 50-yard line. Hosley clearing everybody away from it. Yellow Jackets will let it roll, and it'll stop at the 42-yard line. 7.44 to play, Virginia Tech with the lead and the ball. Two races remain to crown a champion. Only three points separating Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart as the fight for the NASCAR Sprint Cup goes to Phoenix. Cobalt Tools 500 at Phoenix. Coverage starting on ESPN, 2 o'clock Eastern time. Here are the top five. Edwards with the slightest of leads over Stewart. Kevin Harvick a little farther back. At 43 points maximum for winning a race. You can also pick up extra points leading lap so Harvick has a shot but things would have to go just right for him it appears to be a two-man race David Wilson back in the game speaking of guys who go fast Wilson does he gets low underneath Julian Barnett gets up to the 49 yard line pick up of about seven on first down this offense has to feel right now if they can execute on this drive and generate points making it a two possession game they can ice this game because Georgia Tech's inability to throw the football efficiently, it's not conducive to playing catch-up. Which means Al Groh's defense has to take some chances here. They've got to do some run blitz support so that they get in the backfield. They cannot sit back against this eye formation and let David Wilson hit him in the mouth. Wilson. Hit the backfield. David does get north and south. He'll be short of the first down, but it'll be third just one and Georgia Tech hasn't been able to stop the quarterback sneak from here. That was a tremendous run by David Wilson. That play looked like it was going to be stopped four yards back in the backfield, setting up a third and five. It's the hidden yards David Wilson finding to make this a manageable third down. So huge play. So strong. So strong in his legs that he stays beneath. He won't let the defenders get to his legs. He keeps churning and spinning. Quarterback sneak, right on cue. Thomas still carrying people. <laughs> Logan inside the 40-yard. I don't know that I've ever seen three quarterback sneaks in a game go for double-figure yards. So see if you can find any helmets on Georgia Tech getting down low enough. You can't tackle the football against 250 pounds. He's going to run right by you. Well, guys aren't trying to tackle him. They're trying to rip the football out instead of getting arms wrapped around him and securing the ball carry. You can only do that if you've seen your teammates start initiating tackles. Somebody's going to get the legs to slow momentum. Clock. Milk the clock if you're Logan Thomas. Georgia Tech jumped into the neutral zone. David Wilson jumps into the secondary. Wilson! Still on his feet and inside the 15. I think this play is going to stand because Jason Peters, defensive lineman from Georgia Tech, was in the neutral zone. A 25-yard run for David Wilson. Outside defense. The penalties decline. The result of the play is a first down. The freakish athleticism of David Wilson allows him to do things with his body that most human beings cannot do. Watch the wiggle right here by David Wilson. His ability to make a player 
in the second level miss right here and they pick up your ACL it's on the ground I like the offensive line watch that offensive line. It's a zone stretch blocking they all latched on to a Georgia Tech defender and just pushed them mowed them and then the vision of David Wilson the explosion passed Wilson has 172 yards it is a career high he's got it again inside the 10 and Wilson is trying to finish this thing off he now he now has seven straight 100 yard games you think of all of the fine running backs that Frank Beamer has had at Virginia Tech that is the longest stretch of 100 yard games by any Hokey running back it's not often a program loses two running backs to the National Football League draft in the same year and has no drop off they lost Ryan Williams and Darren Evans they haven't even blinked and it's been because of David Wilson I think David Wilson when you look at his yards per touch in his career which are around nine that means he's not just a track guy that's running around fast he's breaking tackles the yards after touch Wilson the flying yellow jacket in the background this time David's going to lose a couple Isaiah Johnson throwing his body in there Georgia Tech defensively is starting to sell out because they understand how drastic this point of the game is right here going Superman up over top remember the winner of this football game over the last six years goes and plays in the ACC championship game do you think Georgia Tech realizes that they right now they don't now you know if this is just out of the quarterback sneak range it's third and seven I don't know I don't know if it's out of his range or not Logan Thomas is been responsible for five touchdowns tonight run the football twice if you have to kick a field goal run it once if you have to kick a field goal whatever two possession game Thomas running it does not get enough for the first down he's going to be about a yard short Stephen Sylvester Isaiah Johnson on the stop now let's see what Beamer does because the clock is against Georgia Tech and even though they had a quick drive at the end of the first half as Jesse's pointed out that is not their game well for field goal the, the conventional thought here would be to kick a field goal but Frank Beamer's sitting there saying wait a minute I've run the quarterback sneak and they have not stopped that and they have no chance of stopping that they've only stopped it once if there's a fumbled exchange if anything happens and this remains a one possession game he won't be able to live with himself they've just got to kick a field goal make this two possessions with 307 to go the all-important field goal attempt we believe coming up for the Hokies Cody Jornel is lining up for a 23 yard field goal Yellow Jackets have blocked or deflected four punts and field goal attempts this year and they desperately need to get a hand on this one to keep it an eight-point game chip shot range for Jornel He is true. And Virginia Tech pushes the lead to 11 with 302 to go. Now this goes back and really an unfortunate situation. Jeremiah Atalchu when he had when Georgia Tech had control and they'd stopped on third down a big play and Atalchu just lost his composure there. It, it's hard. It's hard to fathom it what would possess him to do that but Georgia Tech had the lead they were about to get the ball back they had all the momentum in the world and they haven't had it since Logan Thomas paid it off with a touchdown Atalchu, the sophomore from Washington DC would rather imagine is going to hear about that one for a while and, and Georgia Tech had been playing smart all season long they were only averaging just over four penalties a game well, he's had 11th fewest in the, in the country. Uh, otherwise, Atalchu's had a really good night. You see, he has double-figure tackles, but the error is so egregious. I mean, one play never cost you a game, but it certainly, certainly cost Georgia Tech momentum and the ball in that case. Virginia Tech had just committed two personal fouls themselves. Right. They had given Georgia Tech that life and that opportunity. Just a game of plays that you cannot afford to lose your composure. Georgia Tech. Needs to score quickly. Stephen Hill, their big play receiver, can't handle the kickoff. We've seen that happen a few times to the Yellow Jacks tonight, so they'll have 80 yards to go. Try to get a touchdown. Saturday, a full day of terrific college football. Kicks off at noon on ABC. Most people will see Brandon Wheaton, Justin Blackman, Joseph Randall, and that high-powered Cowboy offense take on Seth Dagey in Texas Tech. 
others will see West Virginia and Cincinnati, the Bearcats leading the Big East Saturday at noon Eastern time, nine on the West Coast. See it on ABC or ESPN3. It's also streaming live on the Watch ESPN app. Now, Georgia Tech hasn't thrown a pass yet in the second half, and now would be a pretty good time to start. Washington wants to. Firing out for Stephen Hill. It's incomplete. That's the right place to go with that ball. Jesse, you and I both pointing immediately because there's single coverage out there. Stephen Hill with a 6'5 body has the ability to make to make a play regardless if it's a good ball thrown right or left and that's why this offense has the ability to score quickly they can find explosive plays they have 23 touchdown drives that have taken less than three minutes now they're not used to just winging it and airing it out all over the yard but they can execute and they can score in a heartbeat we've seen explosive plays in the running game tonight they they need to get chunks of yardage well they lead the nation in 60 yard passes but most of those come with the aid of the element of surprise. Yes. Now, Virginia Tech knows the pass is coming. We'll throw back to Embry Peoples, and it'll be third and long. Anton Exum with the stop. Yeah, this really comes down to where Virginia Tech's defense did a nice job on the inside for the most part in this ball game, especially on the third and fourth and one or less. Third and 11. Pokies all over Tevin Washington. It'll be fourth down. James Gale, Tyrell Wilson. Georgia Tech really has no choice but to try to go for it down 11 with 218 left. Georgia Tech is not in their element. They are not built to take seven steps deep in the pocket and throw the football. You see their right tackle, Tyler Kidney, just getting beat on a speed rush by James Gale, losing the edge. Yeah, these are better Northern athletes. California. You know what? These are better athletes that Paul Johnson has on this football team than he's had in the past. But the offensive linemen, they're not they are, they are not recruited to do pass protection. I mean, this is it is the element of surprise, Reese, that you talked about. It's when they're dangerous in the passing game. And the Virginia Tech defense has four sacks tonight. Georgia Tech had allowed only six coming into the game. Uh, Logan Thomas has had an absolutely spectacular night. Big sophomore from Lynchburg. It's accounted for five touchdowns on the night, three of them through the air. Jarrett Boykin grabbing that one. The quarterback sneak. I did their game against Clemson a few weeks ago, and he ran over Sean Spence in that ball game, who's a fantastic player from Miami. And I think that that, that, that ball game was the was the coming out for Logan Thomas and his confidence. He's a, he is a very accurate thrower, but I think Jesse is just his body. He's, he's taking command of this football team. Fourth and 20, last chance to stay alive for the Yellow Jackets. Tevin Washington firing for Stephen Hill, and I think they're going to get the pass interference, and Georgia Tech will stay alive. Jaron Hosley, who led the nation in interceptions last year, but had a couple of penalties called against him against Duke last week as he was coming back from a hamstring injury, picks up a flag on this one. Pass interference, defense number 20, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. I'm really surprised that Georgia Tech has not gone after J. Ron Hosley more in this football game because of what you just said, Reese. He really struggled two weeks ago against Duke, even though he wasn't 100% in that game. He's been beaten deep a lot this year. You see Tevin Washington taking a monster shot from Jack Tyler on that play. What was Bud Foster doing going man-to-man, -man, even giving them a chance with Stephen Hill out there like that? Pressure coming. Washington goes down. Fifth sack of the night for Virginia Tech. Almost matches the number that Georgia Tech has given up all year. The offensive line at Georgia Tech only averages 290 pounds per player. They are not built to stand up at five and seven step drops and protect. 37-26. Mm. Georgia Tech desperately trying to stay in the game. And the big reason that Virginia Tech has this lead is tonight's Wrangler five-star player of the game. It is Logan Thomas, and it appears that Logan has made Bobby Dodge Stadium his personal Logan's Roadhouse as Virginia <laughs> Tech's about to win his 12th straight on the road. Greg, going back to what you were just saying about Logan Thomas, that Miami game, I think he proved to himself that he could play with the spotlight on him. It was a giant confidence booster for him, yeah. and he's been playing great football ever since that moment. Tonight, I've been most impressed because a lot of his big plays 
have not just come on third down, third and long. Yeah. Making no plays, doubt. running the football, big throws down the field. His composure really has shown up tonight. He had a, sure, a sore shoulder in that Miami game. And I thought, you know, maybe they try to protect him. And then they realized, well, no, he doesn't need protecting. This is a powerful guy. And, and, and his football team just feeds off of him. And so does David Wilson. That's what makes him so good. And the balance of that offense is just too much for teams to handle. We go back to the option. There's not really time for that. It'll be third and about 17. You've got to look at Jeremiah Tauchu sitting on the bench. You can't drop back. You cannot pass protect. It's got to be a snap, get the ball, throw it out. Pressure coming from the corner. Kevin Washington firing. Oh, Embry Peoples had a chance for a huge play. And there's a little distraction from the defensive back as the ball arrived and Embry couldn't make the grab. It'll be fourth down. Some inefficiency in the passing game tonight for Georgia Tech. We saw Orwin Smith with a big drop earlier cool. in this game. Embry Peoples, the chance to make a huge play here late. He just didn't see it. I think he, I think he lost the ball as it passed by a defender, but Washington put it right on the money. It was Eddie Whitley. I took back. the vision away from people. I'd go back again to Stephen Hill. He's the big guy. Uh, throw the ball up and see if he can make a play for you. Fourth down. Washington firing. Peoples was wide open, and this time Washington threw it into the bench area, and Virginia Tech will take over, and they're 90 seconds away from eliminating Georgia Tech from the ACC Coastal Race. It'll be a two-team race between Virginia Tech and their in-state rival, the Cavaliers of Virginia. Who's playing good. Yes, they are playing very well. Continuity at Virginia Tech has led to consistency. There's a coaching staff that's been intact for a very long time. Frank Beamer had been here 25 years. Bud Foster's been here since 1987. Brian Steinspring on offense been here for 19 years. There's a reason they've had 14 straight seasons with at least eight wins, most in the nation. Four ACC championships, looking for a fifth ACC championship. Continuity has done wonders for this Virginia Tech football team. We were talking to Beamer yesterday about the fact that the Hokies have dominated the ACC since they joined in 2004. We get the call. Offside on the defense, number 54. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Right, we get a chance to see Blacksburg next Thursday night. North Carolina goes in there and takes on the Hokies. We always enjoy going to Blacksburg. <laughs> Blacksburg on a Thursday night. They will be Special ready. environment. Getting back to what I was saying about Beamer and dominating the ACC, the other thing that he is particularly proud of, they've won 10 or more, yeah. seven straight years, and now they're just one win away from doing that yet again. It's been, you, know, you talked about the consistency on the staff, it has certainly, it's certainly paid off in their program as well. He does a tremendous job keeping his team focused late in seasons. Since 2004, they're now 25-2 and two in games played in the month of November. When they count the most, down the stretch, Frank Beamer and this staff consistently get the best out of their players. They got it tonight. You know what, I, I, for me, when I think of Frank Beamer and the Virginia Tech football team, I think of composure. There's never panic, regardless of the situation for their team. He understands it's a long season, it's a week by week deal. You might be down one week, but you gotta stay the course. And by the time you get to the middle of November, you got a chance if you, if you stay composed. Now Beamer 25 seconds away from his 249th win. Most among active coaches now, and it also ties our good friend Lou Holtz on the all-time wins list as Frank Beamer and his 10th ranked Hokies get their 12th straight road win. That is the longest active streak in the country. He is now 26 and five on the road in ACC place since joining the conference. And the Hokies win it 37-26 behind another splendid performance by David Wilson. You know what? I was looking for another guy to put on my Heisman list. I found him. Number four for Virginia Tech. Really? Yeah, I think so. Why not? Okay. We check in. Down on the field with Jen Brown is with Frank Beamer. Coach, nice all-around play from your offense. Let's start with your quarterback, Logan Thomas, responsible for five touchdowns tonight. How important was his play? 
Well, he's uh, he's the one who keeps us going over there on offense, and uh, some big uh, third and fourth down conversions. Uh, you know, he's a hard guy to bring down, and uh, you know, so I think he just gets a little bit better each and every week. He's a smart guy. He's competitive. And he's a great leader for us. David Wilson had a career night tonight, 177 yards rushing. Why is he so hard to stop? Well, like I said before the game, he's fast and he's powerful, and he runs with such great effort every single play. Your defense was able to come up with some key stops tonight. How would you assess their play and how they handled themselves throughout the whole game? Well, when it came back to the second half, they did a couple of good things against us for what we were doing in the first half. And I thought we came back and adjusted a little bit. And then uh, we were able to get them behind. And uh, they're a tough crowd to stop. Uh, I got a lot of respect for Georgia Tech. Well, you were able to stop them tonight. You talked about tonight's game being like a playoff game heading into the ACC championship. How important was this win? Oh, it's really important. Uh, you know, I, uh, it puts us in a good position. I don't know exactly how we stand with two games to go, but uh, I know we need to take care of next week. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Reese? All right, Jen and Frank will hurry to a monitor someplace. We can show him just where he stands in, <laughs> in the ACC Coastal Race after defeating Georgia Tech now. The Yellow Jackets have been eliminated from contention in terms of playing for the ACC title game. Virginia Tech, a 5-1 and one conference record. Virginia sitting a game back in the loss column. Those two play at the end of the season. Virginia Tech goes on the road. They win it 37 to 26 over Georgia Tech. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Craig James, Jesse Palmer, Jen Brown, and our entire Thursday night crew, I'm Reese Davis saying good night from the flats in Atlanta, Georgia Sports Center. Coming your way now. This Sports Center telecast is brought to you in high definition by Vizio.